What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over the key maintenance issues you'll need to take care of on a N54 powered BMW. This engine commonly gets a label as a unreliable engine as people go on and modify the car without doing some of the key maintenance things. So I'll be going over some maintenance you should do before you modify the car along with things that'll break and some preemptive maintenance. So let's say you just bought a N54 powered car and you're ready to start modifying it. So I would say the first thing that you should do is get new spark plugs and coil packs. So I would highly recommend Elder coils or Delphi coils. However, Elder are going to be the better option. Those are pretty easy to replace and will run you up around $150. You're also going to need to replace spark plugs. Spark plugs should be replaced around every 10,000 miles on a tuned N54 car. I would highly recommend the that you go one step colder. As you start to tune the car, you're going to be running more boost. You would want one step colder plugs to account for that to prevent misfires. I would highly re recommend the NGK 97968. These are one step colder. Gap those to 0.022 inches. The lowest you can gap them is 0.018 inches if you're running around more than 20 psi, I would say. The next thing I would take a look at is oil leaks. Things such as the oil filter housing gasket, the valve cover gasket, oil pan gasket, rear main seal. There's a lot of areas in this car that can leak oil and you don't want oil leaking around everywhere. So uh, I would take a look at those gaskets, uh, take a look around your valve cover, see if there's any leaks anywhere. I would replace the valve cover if the car has over 100,000 miles as that can warp and crack. That'll leave you stranded. You'll have, uh, air leaking out of your engine essentially. Next I would take a look at all the vacuum lines on the car. Over time these silicone vacuum lines can easily break, they'll start to dry up and crack and you'll get boost leaks. Uh, that'll cause things like 30 FF codes. So for around five to ten dollars you can replace all the vacuum lines and oftentimes if they've never been replaced you'll have a much better feeling car. Another vacuum issue that can happen is boost solenoids. So these will run you around $250 to replace. They're quite easy to replace. These manage the vacuum going to the wastegates on the turbo. Uh, these can go out around 80 to 100,000 miles. And I would highly recommend replacing those, especially if you're going to go on and tune the car. Next, I would go on to replace vano solenoids. So these can start cause codes if you're going full throttle for a long period of time or on cold starts, you'll often get crankshaft position codes. Uh, replacing these is around $300. I highly recommend you buy those off of FCP Euro in case they do break again. And I recommend going genuine BMW for these too. While you're replacing vano solenoids, you can also replace intake check valves. These can also cause crankshaft position sensor codes. Two uh, very common failure points on the N54 are definitely the high pressure fuel pump and the water pump. So these can both go out around 60 to 80,000 miles. High pressure fuel pump, there were a lot of issues on the uh, earlier cars and there's still issues on some of the later models. Uh, that's a very, very common failure point. The water pump, yeah, will go out around 80,000 miles. I would also recommend purchasing those off of FCP Euro in case they ever break again, you can get a free replacement and a warranty on those would be lifetime. The next thing I would very highly recommend replacing is definitely fuel injectors. Fuel injectors can cause things such as misfires and rough cold starts. Those are quite expensive to replace. I would highly recommend throwing a set of index 11s or 12s. 12s are by far the best injectors. There are a lot of issues with 1 through 10 with having them leak. They would cause yeah, a lot of misfire codes and um, making getting fuel into your oil actually. When the fuel injectors leak, oil will trickle down the side of the piston wall, past the piston ring, into your oil. And it'll thin out your oil over time, which is very, very bad for the car. Uh, next up, a common thing that could cause some electrical issues is the ground strap. If you live in a more colder environment where there's salt on the roads, the ground strap can go bad. Go bad over time, it'll cause issues with starting the car uh, or low voltage. So that runs around $50, I think, and it's quite simple to replace. Another thing I would recommend replacing is O2 sensors. So those can cause AFR issues. Your car could be smoking or running lean. They are not the most difficult to replace, although they are quite expensive. I would definitely recommend getting those off of FCP Euro. They will be the same price essentially anywhere, but with FCP you will have that lifetime warranty once again. 
Some other things that may break on the car are the PCV valve. That'll cause a lot of smoking issues. So I definitely recommend getting an aftermarket PCV valve. The RB PCV valve is very good. Uh, Vargas Turbo, I believe, makes one too, I believe. That is just plugged into the back of the valve cover. You screw it in, it's very easy to replace. And even if your car isn't smoking, I 100 million percent recommend that you go out and buy one of those. A very important thing you should take care of on the N54 is replacing the accessory belt and the tensioners. So over time, if the belt just gets worn or if oil from the oil filter housing leaks onto it, the belt can break, it can fray or slip off. And what will happen is the belt will get wrapped up around the crank pulley, gets sucked into the engine, and your engine is either total or you're going to spend a lot of money picking out pieces of rubber. So stay on top of that. I highly recommend replacing the belt as often as you can. Buy it through FCP Euro. You can replace it yearly if you want, just to have that peace of mind. Another very common issue is wastegate rattle on the M54 platform. So over time, the turbos, the wastegate mechanism will get worn out and start to rattle when you are decelerating. It is quite obnoxious and it is not cheap to fix whatsoever. OEM turbos will always have this issue. The real way to fix this is to go with aftermarket turbos. I highly recommend going with someone like Pure or Vargas. They make quite reliable turbos. They change the wastegate assembly to stainless steel to prevent this issue from happening. Although aftermarket turbos common have issues, commonly have issues with people running too much boost and then blowing out the turbo seal, but they will typically be more reliable than OEM turbos if you don't push them. If you have an automatic, you should definitely do a fluid change, ZF solenoid, and some of the mechatronic sleeves. There's four sleeves, one bridge seal, uh, the mechatronics, like adapter sleeve, and the, the six or se I think seven ZF solenoids. If you're having rough shifts, or if your car just has over 80,000 miles, I recommend doing all of it. Make sure you do the ZF solenoids. A lot of people miss out on those and will have shifting issues. Just while you have the mechatronics unit out, you should definitely replace those. Once you've replaced the fluid, uh, if you buy it through FCP Euro, you'll get free replacement, so you can start to do that every however many miles you wish. I would recommend doing an oil changes every two to 5,000 miles, depending on how hard you drive the car. Coolant, I would definitely recommend using BMW Genuine Coolant, doing coolant flushes every now and then. Power steering fluid flush, it's not too difficult. You use a liquid, a fluid transfer pump and pump out old fluid while filling in new fluid. You can also do your diff fluid. I would recommend doing that around 80 to 100,000 miles just for preemptive maintenance. I would also recommend at some point replacing the upper radiator hose. That is very common to break. If you're going to take out your radiator fan, you may bend the uh, coolant hose running across it and it'll snap that if the car is old. So I would say if the car has over 80,000 miles, it's very common for that to break. Another coolant hose that's common to break in the N54 community, we like to call it the Mickey Mouse hose. It plugs in underneath the oil filter housing. In order to do the oil filter housing gasket, you need to take out that hose. And when you do, it'll break 95% of the time. Instead of buying a new hose and routing it, which is a pain, you can buy a metal replacement. I'll put a link to it in the description. And it saves you a lot of time and it'll last a long time to it's metal. Another issue you'll come across in the N54 is carbon buildup and walnut blasting. So with the twin turbo system, there's a lot of oil blow by. What'll happen is when crankcase pressure gets high, it'll blow oil and air into the intake system. Over time, this oil will accumulate on the intake valves and build and create carbon deposits. The reason why this happens is as it's direct injection, the uh, gas is enabled to clean off those intake valves. So what people will start to do is they will take walnut shells and blast them into the intake ports and clean them off essentially. Uh, walnut blasting can help uh, re restore power. I've seen cases where it can restore around 20 horsepower depending on how bad the buildup is. And you'll also have rough idle if the buildup is bad enough. So that's a very common thing you should take care of. I would say every 60 to 100,000 miles, it all comes down to what oil you use and what gas you use. Some issues that are common on the 2007 models 
are firstly the DME, the computer that controls the car. MSD80 has a MOSFET issue where you can be driving and a MOSFET can go and your car will die essentially and it won't restart. You can get that replaced for around $400 if you do it yourself, buying a new DME and shipping it out for coding. Uh, yeah, that is a common issue on the 2007s. It is definitely something you want to take care of preemptively because your car can just die one day. It happened to me, I was out driving, it took out my uh, high pressure fuel pump with it and it took out a coil. So it was pretty pricey to replace. Second is cam ledges. So the cam ledge bearings on the 2007 models are made out of metal and it's a little too sharp and it can cut into the cam ledges over time. And what will happen is your car will start to throw camshaft position codes. And even though you might replace your vano solenoids and take check valves, it'll still throw these codes so they can come up while you're driving. That is quite pricey to replace. The kit itself is $1,400, but it's not the most common thing to happen. If you stay on top of oil changes, I would say that this probably won't occur. And finally is put retrofitting an oil cooler. A lot of the 2007 models didn't come with an oil cooler. If you live in like a colder environment, it won't have one. Like an all-season car won't have one typically. So I would definitely recommend upgrading that. You can get an oil filter housing with the thermostat for around $100 off of eBay. And you could either retrofit the OEM oil cooler on. I'm sure people in your area are probably selling one since they upgrade, or you can go to an upgraded one. You can get those for around $200 off of Amazon. A few more things that can go out are the AC compressor. You can also have the power steering pump go out. I've seen the washer fluid motor go out as well. There's a ton of things that can happen. That doesn't necessarily mean it'll happen to you. But at the end of the day, if you take care of the car, it'll take care of you. Just make sure you stay on top of maintenance. Make sure you're doing oil changes as frequently as you can. And the car should be very reliable. The amount of enjoyment I get out of the M54 is astounding. The amount of power you can make for the price is great too, but keep in mind you're making 400 horsepower for $2,000 in mods, you're going to have some reliability issues. It's not really doable on many other platforms. So that concludes this list. Don't be scared with the amount of things on this list. The car is great. If I left anything out, feel free to leave it in the comments, and thank you guys for watching.